obviously as a kid, yeah. I used to love football jerseys. Um, like that was the first thing I remember. My first jersey I remember was double Shukert jersey I got. Um, it would have been like around the 98 era, 97, 98 era. And I remember, I think it was a cousin from Croatia sent, sent the jersey. And it was like a replica. It wasn't like a proper jersey. Yeah. It was like a just checkers, had the number nine, Shukert at the back. And uh, it was a complete set, had the shorts as well. And ever for, from there, that's when I just loved football jerseys. And back, obviously, growing up, you couldn't buy a lot of jerseys. They, they weren't like proper original ones. So it was always like replica ones that that, that I had. Um, and it wasn't until I started getting older that you could get more original jerseys like for, for boys and, and kids yeah. and that. So I used to, I remember go overseas when I went for holidays and even on the internet, I was bugging my old man to buy me jerseys <laughs> all the time. So ever since I was a little boy, I remember just any jersey I could get my hands on, I would wear. Um, I remember my first Socceroos jersey as well. It was around the 99, here I think it's that that number ten style there. That was probably my first Socceroos one. Um, I had the home away, the shorts, everything, and used to go to the backyard, put the kit on, and just kick the ball around for all day. So, um, and then obviously as I got older, I started obviously playing and that, and I just always kept all my jerseys. I never used to give them out very lightly. Always people were nagging me for jerseys and. Had to convince me, I had to be a very good friend or relative for me to give away jerseys, so yeah. My Australia game that really sticks to my mind was a 97 one against Iran. I remember we were actually at the Croatian house in Sunshine, watching it on a little box like this. There yeah. was like 15 kids watching it, yeah. and it's up high. And I just remember that uh, pitch invader. Yeah, and okay. then Australia lost momentum after, and yeah, yeah. obviously got knocked out of the World Cup. and. The Croatia game that really sticks out to me, and I still watch it to today, is uh, when we played Denmark in Euro 96. 96, yeah. The Shuker, yeah, the the chip. chip yeah, yeah, that over one. Over Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sticks out to me. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember the 96 as well. I was pretty young then, but I, that one still I remember. But the 98, I remember. I can, every game, I can tell you the lineup, the player that played, the score, the scorer. Like, it's crazy. When I look back, I can tell you 90, 98. Every every result of Croatia's game, but now, like if I look back at the previous World Cups, I can't remember. <laughs> you know, obviously the 2018 one was the one that you can yeah. remember, but just it just sticks with me as like a seven-year-old boy. I just remembered everything: what number each player had, the jersey, what boots they were wearing, how they used to put their socks up. I remember Boban always had some different socks than everyone else. <laughs> yeah, it's actually a funny story about Boban that I, I found out later. Boban always they used to wear Lotto Croatia, yeah. and Boban played for AC Milan as well, and they wore Lotto as well. But Boban always had different socks than the actual, all the other players in the team. Yeah. And he was wearing AC Milan socks <laughs> for, for Croatia. Yeah? Yeah. It's actually a true story. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. And I couldn't believe that. And someone told me that not long ago. And then I looked back at it and it made sense. He was actually wearing, I think it was the white sock when they wore the white strip uh, yeah. and with a white sock. He was wearing like the Lotto had a red red Lotto sign on it. And it was an AC Milan one. And everyone else had obviously the Croatian ones. Maybe he lost his socks. Maybe. <laughs> I think maybe superstitious or something. I don't know. But... <laughs> Yeah, that was that was one that I remember. Yeah, yeah it worked for especially Croatia for a small population to keep doing what they're doing. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, so. Football's like religion there. I think go six World Cup. I'm pretty sure I was at Dinamo. Yeah. Who are you going for? Oh, look, it's a hard one because both teams have. Uh, I can't say who you're going for. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was obviously when you're at St Albans, you want a crow to win that game at that yeah, yeah. time, but you know you want the Aussies to do well as well. Yeah. yeah. It's a hard question when people go, who do you want to win Croatia? Depends who asks that, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> and it depends on uh, if Australia needs it to go through or yeah, Croatia yeah. needs it to go through. So it's a tough question. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I went to the game, the Croatia Australia game, yeah. with my dad. And I remember I've had the scarf on. It was half scarf was Australia, half Croatia. Um, I'm not sure about that. I saw a photo, it was all Croatia. No, nah, no, nah, it was half and half. <laughs> I actually got a photo with John Cosmina. I saw him outside the stadium. I've got a photo, I, got, I had a Croatia jersey on, yeah. but it was a half-half and there's, I've actually got a photo with John Cosmina um, outside the stadium because we actually went into the same, the same gate and <laughs> bumped into him and had a photo with him. Um, I remember that one, um, but yeah, it's one of those ones where it's a win-win really. It is. It's a win-win, yeah. Win. So it was um, growing up, you know, growing up in a Croatian family, you sort of always lean to Croatia because you sort of brought up, you're watching all the games and, and, and the passion and that, but you know, I've got so many memories of watching the Socceroos play and, and having the jerseys and like I said, I've got so many games that I remember, I used to get up 
every every game they played, I used to wake up if that was in the middle of the morning or make my mum record it for me. So I'd watch it the next day. Um, I was just a fanatic. So tell me, Ivan, well, what's it like to actually play at a World Cup? Yeah, it's, you know, obviously at the time you're playing Socceroos, you're getting ready for a big tournament. I think back then you take it a bit for granted. Yeah. But when you look back now, you're like, well, that was something special. And obviously we played Croatia in the lead up game. And you... I remember watching that game. I was in, in holiday in Croatia at the time in Split. And I remember watching that game and jealous, very jealous, <laughs> to be honest, watching you play against them. And I remember, and I remember you, you swapped jerseys with Sudden after that the game. Yeah, 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 one of your oh, idolising idolizing, idolizing, yeah, obviously yeah. right back as that's well. Right, so. yeah, so that's right, yeah. No, it was, it was very good. And obviously, you never thought I'd get that opportunity, but to play against Croatia was something special. You got to chat to him after the game. Did you chat to him during the game at all? Or? No, not really. Like, <laughs> when I play, I'm a winner, you know? Yeah, so yeah. I just want to win, that's all that matters. Did uh, Mordic play in that game? Or? Mordic played. I was actually yeah. on Pedersic that game. Oh, yeah? So, yeah. yeah. No, it was a good game. Manzukic was there. Rakitic was telling us after he's going Barcelona. Oh yeah? You yeah. got the inside goal straight away. <laughs> yeah, inside. I think it was pretty much done, but yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was actually good. And then obviously going out preparing, you start seeing fans at training. I think we had Brazilian fans at training one day. The whole stadium was full, it was incredible. And just being in Brazil, I think Brazil, it's like where football is. Yeah. The passion, everything. And we didn't even get to a shopping center, we need security and we just have Brazilian fans following us around. Yeah, yeah, and then obviously we walked out and played against Chile our first game. When the Chileans sang the national anthem, it was like wow. Yeah, yeah. It was like something special. How loud it was, and yeah. obviously we started the game terribly. We were two 0 down after I think 15, 16 minutes, if I'm correct. Yeah. yeah you like, whipped in the cross that again. Yeah. You whipped in the cross. Yeah. 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 yeah like we're in for a long night. I remember but, that. Yeah. You know, momentum turn. We just have to get through it. Obviously, it was disappointing. We copped two goals, but. Once we got through that, I was fortunate enough to set up Timmy. We yeah. got back to 2-1, half time, and I felt like we were a stronger team. We were on top of them. And then we came out for the second half, and uh, I'd done my hammy. Like yeah, I remember. Yeah, minutes, yeah. So obviously, it was disappointing. We worked so hard. Dream being in a World Cup. I still like to this day that I played there. Yeah. But even then, like I think we scored a goal. It was disallowed. Timmy scored another goal. I don't know what happened to, at the time, to be fair. And then, obviously, Chile got one late. But no, it's an amazing experience, and I thought, you know, obviously Australia had a group of death, Spain, Chile, Holland, yeah. but I thought we represent ourselves well. Yeah, look, it's going to be hard for, obviously Australia's got a very tough group. Yeah. Um, France, Denmark, Tunisia, it's going to be very hard, but you, you, look, you never know, you never know. And with Australia's obviously mindset, um, they're, they're known for never giving up. So. I, you can have, anything can happen. Um, Croatia, you, you, you'd expect them to, to get through the group, um, but again, it's a World Cup. You know, you, you just don't know how they're going to show up. Um, obviously, at the moment, I think most players are looking fit, so there's not many injuries, which is a positive. But I'm pretty confident that Croatia should get through the next group stage. For me as well, you look like you said, it's Qatar, it's the unknown, and it's. Australia can probably spring a surprise early on because obviously they've played their an important game already. Yeah. They're probably a bit more climatised, so if they can hit uh, you know, France, if we can hit them early while they haven't climatised, yeah. we can... World champions. Yeah, yeah we can it's cause an upset. Yeah, you know, right, even yeah. take a point there and yeah. you're a chance of progressing if you can pick up a result in the other two games. Yeah. And Croatia, you look at their group, where Croatia is and where they finished last World Cup. You say, obviously they've got expectation now as well, so it's going to be interesting to see how they deal with that pressure, I guess, because last World Cup they didn't have any pressure. Exactly. No one expected anything from them. So this World Cup there is that bit of expectation. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they, they deal with that. And you know, usually they, from previous World Cups, the big games they usually deliver. Um, it's usually the, sm the smaller games that they struggle a little bit with. But um, I'm hoping for Australia and Croatia to, to, to get through this group stage would be, would be good It'll to be see. It'll be amazing to see both yeah. get through, you yeah. know, especially Australia going further and like Croatia. We always make it hard for ourselves, but we always get through somehow. Yeah. Even through qualifications and that, we lose, like you said, the small games. When they need a win against a big team, they'll do it. Yeah. So knowing Croatia will probably lose the first game, win the next, <laughs> two, the next two and progress. Yeah, that's right. right.